at least a little bit of it for those of you dying of thirst. I did not anticipate. <laughs> Let me change. All right, Brad Treliving continues to mold the Leafs to what he wants them to be in his front office and behind the bench. So let's talk about it, but first, wanna bet? Because you can, and you can at Sports Interaction. Is there any NHL hockey? No, but there's a bunch of other stuff. Baseball, obviously. Tennis was popping off last week. Golf. Bet before the game, live in play, lots of prop bets. If you think you know which way it's gonna go, head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. I was just wearing an SDPN shirt before it got all wet. And download the Sports Interaction app, but only if you're 19 plus please play responsibly. All right, where do we start? I think we should start with today's news, which is the Leafs have added two assistant coaches to their already pretty big staff. Probably the most notable name of the two, Guy Boucher was added behind the Leafs bench to take over as one of the assistant coaches. And with him, former Leaf, Mike Van Ryan. Mike Van Ryan obviously has his own little place in Toronto Maple Leafs history. He was famously traded for Brian McCabe back when Brian McCabe's contract at five a point five million dollars was way too much. Keep in mind, this is when the salary cap was like, what, 45 mil? It's nearly doubled and it still sucks. But unfortunately, his time as a Toronto Maple Leaf was largely mired by injuries and at one time, Milan Lucic put him through the glass in TD Garden. Still a wild clip to watch. I, I tell you to look it up, but you've probably already seen it a thousand times. Because he got put through the glass at TD Garden by young Lucic too. Like, that, that, that was a bad man. But it looks like the Leafs finally get the right-handed defenseman they were looking for in Mike Van and Ryan, who knows? Maybe he can help out that decor a little bit. But the reason I said Guy Boucher is the more notable name is heading into this offseason, we didn't know whether or not Brad Treliving was going to keep Sheldon Keefe on board. He put everyone's mind, mostly Sheldon's, at ease when he talked about joining the Calgary Flames and how they had Bob Hartley and people thought he was going to let him go and then he kept him and then he won coach of the year. And we all took that to mean, oh, well that means he's going to keep Sheldon Keefe and hooray for Sheldon Keefe. But just because Sheldon Keefe is safe for now doesn't mean that he's going to be safe forever and at some point you're going to need a replacement. And yes, I'm sure Guy Boucher will be a splendid assistant coach, but let's not pretend like there might not be another motive behind this move. Very recently, the Leafs, and more specifically the Marlies, hired John Gruden, not the coach from the NFL, but the coach who coaches hockey. He was an assistant coach with the Boston Bruins last year, and he's going to be the head coach of the Toronto Marlies. And on the Steve Dangle podcast, I said, oh, there's a potential candidate to take over for Sheldon should the Leafs make the choice to fire him at some point during the season. By the way, usually a coach gets fired when things aren't going great, so I hope Sheldon doesn't get fired. And while I still think there is maybe a possibility there, Guy Boucher has been a head coach of two NHL teams, the Ottawa Senators, the Tampa Bay Lightning. He was a head coach in Switzerland. He's a head coach traditionally. Of course, what could happen, remember how I mentioned John Gruden was an assistant coach with the record-setting Boston Bruins last year? Well, let's say Sheldon Keefe gets fired. Up, oh, you put in Guy Boucher as the new head coach. John Gruden potentially comes up for the Marlies and fills in as an assistant coach, but do you really want to disrupt your minor league team like that? There, there are lots of possibilities, and Brad Treliving is just using the financial might of the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, for stuff that doesn't fall under the salary cap, which why wouldn't he? I've mentioned a lot of names, by the way. Here's what the staff is supposed to look like because different coaches manage different things. Uh, Kyle Cushman put it together nicely. Here's the full list. Obviously, Sheldon Keefe is the head coach. All the decisions eventually come back to him. Power play coach is gonna be Guy Boucher, which is interesting because he's most notably a defense first, sort of 1-3-1 uh, defense first coach, but he hasn't coached in the NHL since 2019. A lot has changed since 2019, so maybe he has as well. The penalty kill is going to be managed by Dean Chenoweth. Defense is going to be managed by Mike Van Ryan, which makes sense on account of he was a defenseman. The eye in the sky is going to be Manny Malhotra. I think that is, that's really interesting. So basically he won't be behind the bench. He'll be in the press box or wherever the Leafs set him up. It's been rumored that Manny Malhotra has been pushed out of the Leafs coaching staff for a long time. Remember he did manage the power play and then he wasn't doing that anymore because Spencer Carberry was doing it. And now Spencer Carberry has gone. 
and Malhotra didn't replace him. He's actually being pushed off the bench. I feel like the Leafs like Malhotra because if they wanted to get rid of him, they could have many times over the past two years. So they obviously value his opinion and they think he'll be better in that role. Rounding out the staff, of course, we have Curtis Samford as the goaltending coach and the video coaches are Sam Kim and Jordan Bean. Now look, there was all the theorizing and who might take over from Sheldon Keefe and all that. Let's not get distracted. Sheldon Keefe is the head coach. So we should be looking at the Leafs and looking at these decisions like Sheldon Keefe is the head coach. The power play was good last year. It better be good this year under Guy Boucher. The defense took steps last year. And it better be good under Mike Van Ryan. Listen, if this upcoming season goes south, all eyes are going to turn to Sheldon Keefe. That's just the natural order of things. I just hope in the offseason, now, in July, that's not where our focus is. It should be, is he going to do a good job? Is Guy Boucher going to do good at his job? Mike Van Ryan, etc. Now, the Leafs made another addition to the front office. They hired Derek Clancy as, and I, I, I thought he was just the assistant general manager. I was wrong. His official title is assistant general manager, comma, player personnel. And we'll get to that in a minute. Derek Clancy is in the ECHL Hall of Fame. In fact, he played in the ECHL with a team called the Columbus Chill. And you would know this if you watched my Brad Treliving video a while back when I flagged the fact that Derek Clancy and Brad Treliving had not just played together before, but they had managed together in Calgary. And if Clancy became available, Treliving might take a look. Mark Guy, going on EliteProspects.com and stuff. Clancy spent a long time with the Pittsburgh Penguins as a pro scout. And because of Thomas Drance at The Athletic, he actually knows about the Mark Donk and Buzz Flibbit meme. And if you don't know what that meme is, uh, I, I don't want to explain it. Basically, for a number of years, the Pittsburgh Penguins were famous for finding players out of seemingly nowhere, and then you look and they have 47 points, and it's all based on a tweet that Acton Afuleman made a long time ago. And man, I, I, I realize I barely speak English to people who don't have Twitter. Anyway, here is the Leafs' very bloated front office right now. And again, this doesn't fall under the salary cap, so... Who cares? It's not my money. Obviously, there's Brendan Shanahan, the president and alternate governor. There's Brad Treliving, who is the general manager. Brandon Pridham is still the assistant general manager. There's all these rumors he's going to go to Pittsburgh, and they're getting quieter and quieter. I think the Leafs like the guy who helped write the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, Dr. Haley Wickenheiser is the assistant general manager, comma, player development. So it's, it's interesting. Obviously, we know... Lots of teams have more than one general manager, but they don't all label what that specific assistant general manager is managing. With Dr. Haley Wickenheiser, it's so baller that she just puts that in her name. Uh, obviously, she's under player development. Then there's Derek Clancy, assistant general manager, player personnel. Player development, player personnel. Okay. Ryan Hardy is the assistant general manager, minor league operations. He's the GM of the Toronto Marley, so he has a pretty similar role to Kyle Dubas when he joined the Leafs, I would imagine. Daryl Metcalf is still the assistant GM, hockey research and development. Shane Doan is special advisor to the general manager. He's not even assistant GM, he's special advisor to Dwight Troops. Dave Morrison is the director of player personnel. And Wes Clark, there's another Kyle Dubas holdover, director of amateur scouting and assistant director, player personnel. Now, I mentioned that Clancy was with the Pittsburgh Penguins for a long time. That was the team he was with for the longest. Treliving hired him in Calgary. He was there for a hot minute before getting a promotion with the Vancouver Canucks. Then he leaves the Vancouver Canucks organization and comes to Toronto. Now, what's strange about that, and I checked EliteProspects.com and their staff directory just to make sure I was right about this. He was a pro scout with the Calgary Flames. Then he was assistant general manager with the Vancouver Canucks and now he's assistant general manager with the Leafs and you don't always see that a manager a coach even leaving a team laterally like unless I'm missing something and I might be it doesn't sound like Derek Clancy is getting a bump up in role with the Leafs as opposed to the Canucks he simply walked from his position with the Vancouver Canucks and went to the Toronto Maple Leafs for a 
very similar position, if not exact same position. Rachel Dory, who used to work for the New Jersey Devils and more notably for this, the Vancouver Canucks, is now doing some work for the Hockey News and she chimed in about Derek Clancy. She said, this is an excellent hire. Clancy is a blend of old school and new school. My guess is he'll be heavily involved with the draft and any player acquisitions. Really keen scouting eye and understands value of analytics. She went on to say he is a sharp, curious, emotionally intelligent person and wrote about him at length in the hockey news. So hey, that's encouraging. And look, I'm sure you're interested as a hardcore fan who's getting hired to be assistant GM, who's getting hired to be the assistant coaches behind the bench. I know what you want to know is... Is Matthews getting re-signed? Is Nylander getting re-signed or traded? Elliot Friedman had a report recently. Uh, there hasn't really been progress there. Listen, hockey news could happen. It could just pop off at any minute. Uh, Ilya Samsonov, he, he could honestly be offered a contract extension in the time it's taking me to shoot this video. But it seems like right now, at very least until Samsonov gets done, business with the Leafs and pretty much league-wide is at a bit of a standstill. Spanning a little on Samsonov before we get to the end of this video, uh, he's at salary arbitration with the Leafs right now and it's a joke. Um, uh, he was offered 2.4 by the Leafs. That's a joke. He should be getting a lot more than that. He asked for 4.9 that's a joke. <laughs> I don't think he should be getting that much. It, arbitration is just the player asks for too much, the team asks for too little, and the arbitrator just splits the difference, and that would add up to 3.65. If he comes in under that, huge victory for the cap of the Leafs. But I, I think we can agree, based on how good he was last year, he's worth about that right maybe on a multi-year deal that'd be nice but i'm waiting right along with you i i need the news i need it in my life it's okay to take some time off but i need it so that is it for this one thank you very much for watching click like if you like this video click subscribe if you really liked it tell all your friends to watch this after they're done watching my Nylander got traded video or re-signed video which i assume i'll be uploading uh, it's, uh, it's about quarter after two, uh, six, six, seven, it's, it's, it's gonna happen.